Hi, welcome to Technical Old Dad. I'm Mark. Hi to all my new subscribers, and if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. This week we're going to be looking at my old Hornby turntable, and I'm going to convert this to DCC. Here we are at the workbench with the turntable. The motor is in this housing here, so we're going to take this apart. I've got a chip here which I'm going to solder onto the motor, with the supply then going off to the main track feed bus wire. We're also going to use a DCC auto reverser, similar to the one I used on the return loop. We're using this because if we have a, a loco on here with the power feed coming in, and as it spins round, if it's not lined up with the correct priority on the exits, it will cause a short. And by using this, we can negate that problem so we won't have any shorts. So we're going to pop this housing off. which just goes in these little tabs here, just press them in and it should just pop off. Like so. Now, if you're not familiar with one of these and you've got a mobile phone, take a photo of the way the gears are organized so you can uh, put it back together again easily. I'm just gonna pop these out. And that leaves the motor there exposed. There's just two little clips there holding it in. And we'll just pop that out. And there's the motor with the wiring it came with. Now I'm going to snip these off and tin the connections there with a blob solder. And then we'll look at connecting the chip to it. Okay, so I've uh, prepared the chip. So we have the orange and gray wire, which will go to the motor, and then the black and red wire which will go off to the bus wire feed. The other terminals, I haven't cut them off. I've left them their normal length. I've just isolated them there and insulated them with a bit of tape. Uh, I'm gonna use these at a later date for some lighting functions in the little hut that's on here and some of the lighting around the engine sheds. So I'll be able to control that from the DCC controller. So now what we'll do is we'll take these connections and we'll just solder them onto the motor. So remember, it's the grey and orange that go on to the motor. So a little bit of flux on there. And, um, and just touch, hold it in place, and there it is. A blob of solder, just touch it, hold it in place while the solder hardens. There we go. It's easy as that. Always remember to clean off your solder and iron, helps the end of the solder and iron last longer. Now we're going to lengthen these wires. So these are the supply that goes to the bus wire. So I've just got an extra length of red and black to lengthen them with. So I'm just going to twist them together so they have a good connection. And just put a blob of flux on them. And then dab a solder just to secure the joint. There we are. Tint, and now we'll secure it and insulate it with a little bit of heat shrink. This will just stop them shorting out. Snip that a little bit off. Again, use solder and iron just to rub some heat over the heat shrink just so it shrinks down, it becomes a nice snug fit. I'm 
Now it's just the reverse of what we've done when we took the motor out. We just pop it back in and put all the gears back in. There's all the components fitted back in. I've used a cable tie just to secure the chip and all the wiring in place and to stop it coming out if there's a tug on the cables. Now it's just a matter of popping this back on. I'm going to hook it up to the programming track now to program the chip and give it a test to make sure it's all working and then we'll look at fitting it onto the layout. There's the turntable in the general sort of position I wanted. I've just hooked it up to the track with a couple of crocodile clips just so we can test it and see it working. There we can see it spins. It's a little bit noisy, but these uh, Hornby turntables always were. So you can see it pauses at every exit. So that's working fine on the DCC system. So we'll stop that. So this is going to be the main entry in to the turntable. So this is where the auto reverser comes into play now. So this section of track, I've put insulation fish plates at the end of this point. So this will be totally isolated from the rest of the track and it'll be supplying power from the auto reverser. So I'm going to solder a couple of wires onto the bottom of this to connect into the auto reverser and then two wires from that will go into the main bus feed. So I'll get on and do that now. Turntable is now fixed in position. I've wired in the auto reverser and I've put one line on. Now I've put these coloured crocodile clips on to help to explain to you a bit better why we need the auto reverser. So it's my usual wiring convention, black to the back. So you can see this rail is black. So that's why the black crocodile clips are on there and red on the other side. And over here on this line, again, black to the back. So the black line is towards the back. Again, nominated with these crocodile clips. So if we turn the turntable round, You can see we've stopped it and the rails line up. So we've got red to red, black to black, no problem. But what if we had turned the turntable the other way around? So we'll turn it all the way around now. And you can see now by turning it around the other way, the black is now alongside the red, and the red is alongside the black, so it would cause a short and your system would stop. But by having the auto reverser in, this automatically swips over the power so you don't get the short. And that's why we use the auto reverser with the turntable. You don't need to use an auto reverser, you would just have to be careful with which way you turn the turntable so you don't short it out but it leaves no room for error. Well, I hope you find that useful, converting an old Hornby DC turntable to DCC. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below the video and I'll try and get back to you. If there's a good few comments or you want clarification on something, what I may do then is add another bit on to the following week's video, answering the questions from the previous week, if that makes sense. So please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.